Hello everybody. Today I want to talk about this construction. This is a thrust vector nozzle with integrated thrust reverser. And let's see how it works. So let's take a closer look to the whole concept. It is based on a, a very easy construction of a thrust reverser, like it is uh, used um, on the Concorde. And uh, I inked, integrated it into my um, already used um, thrust vector nozzle, which I use on the SUX, which uh, I built completely made of composites. But there was a lot of modification necessary. And it also doesn't work uh, from the first moment. So, let's take a closer look to the construction itself. Here we got the forerunners uh, of this uh, truss reverser. And we start with the very first one. It is made very simple. We got a vector ring and these two vector shells, like it is used on the Concorde. And uh, these shells are swiveling about uh, 90 degrees. So it looks um, very similar to a normal thrust vector nozzle we got here on the SUX. And um, what I was learning is that um, before this thrust reverser really produces uh, thrust reverse, um, the distance between the ring and the shells itself and the angel of the shells has to be optimized. And uh, I start very small because I want to build always lightweight and this um, nozzle needs place to move at the end of the SUX. So it has to be small and light. And that's why I start small, but this one doesn't work. So I got everything a little bit bigger like like this I optimized the manufacturing everything was a little bit nicer but the problem was it doesn't work anyway yeah and the next problem was that these shells um, do not have a clear touch point and and here was also no ceiling be between the ring the vector ring and uh, the the uh, thrust reverser shells. But the next one was even a step bigger. That means the distance, this, this, this distance where the um, shells start and the vector ring was bigger and also um, this um, angel was a bit steeper. And we got our lip. That lip closes the gap when the uh, shell is, um, is moving to the ring. But no reverse thrust. So I get even a step bigger. When you combine these two, you can see this. Next one is, uh, I think, uh, two or three centimeter longer. And I, I shortened this, this ring to, to keep the um, whole construction as short as possible. And I also made the angel of this um, shells a little bit steeper. I was testing this in, in little steps. I put here something between so I can test every angel to find the optimum. But this one doesn't work anyway. So I made it longer and bigger again like this. And this was the one that works really nice. So. Let's come and see how it works. We got the EDF in front, the Schübeler EDF, and we got a scale. The scale is on zero. And now let's see how much reverse thrust the thrust reverser produces.
and we also want to take a view on the thrust reverser itself and uh, the airflow which comes out of it. For this reason I put some rules on it that will uh, visualize the airflow for us. So let's go! So, at the end, I want to show you how these thrust reversers are made. Like I told you, they are mostly made of composites. Uh, this means carbon fiber and also Kevlar fiber. And um, I think it's not that difficult to do this. I start always with um, something like this. This is a paper tube, which I covered with resin and make it smooth and shiny, it is waxed and pv 8 and uh, from this I laminate um, this um, big shell part and from this carbon part you can see here uh, this is the pattern of uh, one truss reverser shell this will be cut it out by a diamond grinder and then we got the shells and um, for the vector ring this means this part, this, this, this vector ring, we also need to ring and uh, we can do this with um, something like this. This is very thin carbon fiber which I also laminated around the tube like this. This is uh, only uh, one ply of 160 gram carbon fiber and to bring it to the correct diameter yeah, because everything here has to be uh, made very precise and perfect um, that it fits correctly. Um, I cut this, this is styrofoam, which I cut with a um, hot wire cut and covered this with plastic tape and around this, which has the absolutely exact diameter, you can easily put this carbon fiber, yeah, press it, um, put some tape on it for fixing it and then glue it with um, power glue and then you have your prototype of the ring, but it is not stable enough, but you have the correct diameter and you let it stay on this and after this you wind so much carbon fiber around it you need for a very stable ring. Then you got to this, this is the vector ring and this ring uh, you cut in stripes what you need, I think here this was 15 uh, millimeter, yeah. here you cut it and then you got your ring and that's it. Yeah. All parts are glued with power glue and stays very well and I'm happy with it. So, I hope you enjoyed this small little video and build your own truss reverser. And um, yes, if you have some notes from me, write it down in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumb up and we we'll see us in the next video. Bye bye!